Welcome to Enhancing the Human Experience. This is episode 66, and on today's episode, I'm going to share with you some of the thought tools that I use whenever I have this notion that, hey, you know, why bother doing this, Mark? Someone else is already doing it at a higher level than you are, uh, a better level than you are. They've got an audience. They're doing whatever you're doing really well. And in fact, you listen to those people, so why even bother? I'm going to share with you some of the thought tools that I use to get past that, and maybe they'll help you in your own creative endeavors, you know, as you're expressing yourself in business or in your personal life or relationships to be your authentic self and show up in the world in the way that only you can, because ultimately that's, I feel, is one of our underlying goals in life is to kind of get past all this notion of the conformity complex we all live so much so much in and express ourselves. So I'm going to share with you those thought tools. But before I do that, I want to talk about one of the newest products that I've introduced into the Enhancing the Human Experience store, and that's at ethxstore.com. And I'm excited about this product for a couple different reasons, and I'm going to go through some of the some of the ideas here that that embody this product. And actually, I'm going to be putting this message on a number of different products because, in my experience and my research, it's one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, tool or co- level of consciousness that we can allow ourselves to be in. You know, to live in this state, and that is self love. And the mug that I've recently introduced into the store is a full wrap mug with simple message, I love you. And it's a mug for it's a mug for you and also the people in your life. You know, it can be double purpose. But my my intention with the mug was to like allow yourself to it be imbued with self love and and remember that self love is the foundation of everything we're ever going to do in life. I look at it in this way that you know, on an airplane, if they say, hey, if we're going to crash, you've got to put your oxygen mask on first and then help those around you. And the way I look at this self-love and this I love you tool, this thought tool, is that if we don't have self-love, then we can't give that love to anyone else, right? And so it's really about reminding ourselves self-love all day long. That's why, I, you know, I think starting that, starting your day, drinking your coffee or your tea out of that mug is an excellent way to start the day. Because if you're familiar with Dr. Omoto's uh, experiments, and I was turned on to this, this, these videos on YouTube and these experiments where he basically says, I love you to this to this rice, you know, and the rice that he says, I love you to stays nice and pure where the rice that he says, Hey, I I hate you. And I do not like you to this rice. It starts to become moldy and not attractive and starts to just like degrade. So he does this like controlled experiment and he's just putting energy into this rice, either positive love energy or hate energy, just via his words and his like emotional vibration toward this rice. This is the same thing people do when they're talking to their plants, right? Talk lovingly to your plants, they're going to grow a little bit better. And so we can take this out into the world, into our own lives and into our environment and put that love into lots of things. But it really all begins with us. And that's why I'm really excited about this new mug. Even Emmett Fox talked about it in his The Golden the golden Key excuse me, essay, where he said that if you have a problem, I guess I should back up and give you a little bit of a, of a background. The Golden Key essay is a really, really simple essay. It's a two-page essay you can find online if you Google Golden Key by Emmett Fox. And basically, the, the heart of that essay is his thought tool, which is, hey, if you've got a problem... The golden key to solving that problem is to stop thinking about the problem and think about God instead. That's his golden key. And I even pulled that out and made these little golden key cards because I wanted just the essence of that. But that's the golden key. Stop thinking about the problem and think about God instead. And what he suggests is if you have difficulty thinking about God, which can be a challenge in our world because of, of all of the conceptions and maybe negative connotations, positive connotations, whatever, right? He says, hey, if you have a problem thinking about what God is, just try to think about 
you know, the, uh, like don't draw a picture of your mind in your mind about God or use any of the conceptions that are out in the world. Maybe think of God as love or God as, you know, prosperity or, or infinite abundance, those kind of things where the concepts are less tainted with negative or positive connotations that, you know, carry that baggage in with us. But he said, hey, you know, think about God as being love. And a lot of people have talked about this that God is love or that love is the most powerful force in the universe. And I really feel that it's really the most powerful healing force when it comes to healing our consciousness and healing our state of being so that we can show up in the world in our best way and do our best work in the world that is hugely beneficial to other people and serves them in the way they want and need to be served so that they can go out and it creates this ripple effect, doesn't it? So that everyone can be their higher selves, tune into who they really are, and really express their true gifts in the world, as opposed to closing off, right? And not allowing this, if you think of life or the human experience like a lotus flower blooming, maybe if you, they don't have self-love, and if we don't carry that love of ourselves in our heart, we won't bloom the lotus flower, right? We won't share our gifts, we won't express ourselves, and we never know what kind of ripple effect that will have, right? Because if, if you know, think about the history of the human experience. If certain individuals hadn't stood up and expressed themselves, either in math or sciences or the arts or the humanities, we might lose out, we might have lost out on someone pushing the human experience for, forward or someone like do, going to great lengths to move humanity to a higher level. You know, I think that's kind of ultimately what's happening is that consciousness is always raising, awareness is always raising, and it's this ongoing process, but it only happens when we get out of our own way and express ourselves, push through the fear, the resistance, the doubt, and the worry that, hey, I'm not good enough. And that's what I want to share on this podcast today. But I wanted to give a little background on the I Love You mug. Super powerful. Like I said, there's Dr. Omoto's experiments, and I was turned on to Dr. Omoto's experience by my good friend, Trentimus Briggs. He's super knowledgeable about all that kind of stuff, the spiritual, metaphysical aspects. And so he turned me on to that, and it's so, so awesome. Like I said, Emmett Fox talks about it, and I even included it as one of the seven pillars of personal development in a product that I made that is currently available on Udemy. I'm going to be bringing it to my website very soon, but I call it the seven pillars process. And it's really the underlying structure of creating our self-concept and our self-identity, but we have to have that. You know, the seven are, I love myself, I am enough, I value myself, right? I respect myself, I trust myself, I am ready, and I think highly of myself. Let me see if that's seven. It might be seven, I can't remember at the moment, but those, those are the core seven pillars of personal development, but really that basis is self-love. If we don't have that, we don't have anything. So putting your coffee in that mug and drinking it in the morning, the coffee's going to get imbued with positive energy. You know, love is really high on the vibrational scale. David Dawkins of Scale of Vibration, even um, Brene Brown talks about it in his work, in her, excuse me, in her work, but it's really high. I think it's like just the the third down, obviously the highest is enlightenment enlightenment and self-realization, but then love is like right up there, super high vibration. You put your coffee in that mug, it's going to imbue your coffee or your tea with that. You're going to be impressed with it on a subconscious level. All sorts of good things are going to happen. So that's one of the products that I recently introduced in the store. I've actually got one on order. It's coming to me very soon and I will share it on all my social media at G Mark Phillips as soon as it arrives. All right, that's a rather rather long <laughs> snippet for that mug, but I think well worth it. As you can see, I'm really um, insi- excited and enthusiastic about sharing that message, I love you, because certainly it's made a huge difference in my own life. And one more thing before I wrap up this little segment on that mug. If you haven't read Kamal Ravikant's book, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depended On It, I highly recommend it. It's an hour long via Audible, so I'm sure it's fairly short as a print book, but I picked it up on Audible. And he talks about how self-love and repeating this mantra, I love myself, I love myself, or I love you, actually saved his life and turned his life completely around. And I've done little experiments like that on my own, and it is really amazing. That vibration 
just flows through your whole body when you're repeating that mantra over and over again. Even if you don't necessarily believe it or feel it to be true at that point in time, there's something about impressing that onto our, our consciousness that actually raises our vibration and actually kind of it I felt free like the like chains that were holding me back from you know being my authentic self in the world and showing up in the world kind of become broken and and become discarded so that's kind of the some of the things that I, benefits that I've received from doing that mantra but again his book Kamal Ravikant's book love yourself like your life depended on it is super awesome okay we're moving on now here. So getting into the meat of the, of the podcast, I've got a handful of ideas that I want to share with you if and when you run into this idea of, hey, somebody else is already doing this business better than I am. Why should I even bother? Or somebody else is already making this product way better than I am. Why should I bother? Well, here's a couple things I want to share with you. These work to help me get over those types of thoughts. And I'm going to start with these are in no particular order, but I'm going to start with this one. One is we're all here learning and growing and expanding our understanding of the human experience. And the idea I want to share with you is teach what you want to learn. And by that, I mean, what what gives your life meaning and what do you want to become better at and what is in your heart, right? That's one of the reasons why I started this whole business, the podcast and the books that I create talking about consciousness and sharing spiritual messages, and most importantly, interviewing people who are doing that as well and doing you know, sharing good work in the world, doing good things in the world, because it amplifies their messages and it amplifies positivity in the world, because that's what we're challenged with, right? We have negative and we have positive in the world. Everything comes in through human beings. And so we want to be able to amplify the things that matter to us and the things that are important to us. So if we teach what we want to learn, which is positive, optimistic consciousness and, and health, wealth, and success consciousness, and doing good work in the world and creating good products and building good service-based companies, we're going to make the world a better place. So we have all a responsibility to be the change we want to see in the world, like Gandhi talked about, do the things we want to see done, uh, create the products and services. So that's one of the core principles that I think about all the time is, you know, show up in the world as we want to show, we want to be seen in the world and as we want the world to be, because that's the only really way that changes the world. So when we teach what we want to learn and create the products we want to buy and those kind of things, we're making the world a better place. And we're also making ourselves better in the process. That's kind of one of the core principles is teach what you want to learn, create what you want to buy, show up in the world in the way that you want others to show up in the world, right? And be that example. So that's the first idea I want to share with you. The second thing is, this is a pretty big concept as well. And this is goes back to the notion of, if we see someone doing something at a high level, let's just say it's real estate, right? Because there are some rock star real estate individuals out there really, really servicing their customers awesome and taking care of business like nobody's business. Super awesome, stellar. If you were going to get into real estate, you could look at that person and say, wow, they are so good. Why do I, I can't compete with that. Look how awesome they are. Look how many clients they have. Look how many, how much commissions they're making. I don't even want to get into it, right? But the thing of it is that we have to realize is that not everyone is going to resonate with that person, right? With their way of doing business, with their style, with their attitude, with the vibrations they're sending off. There's a market for all of us, but I think it really only happens when we don't imitate what someone else is doing, but instead we turn totally away from what the world is doing and we do what we're doing. And this is kind of one of those core principles of life in general, this this notion that whatever we pursue is going to retreat from us. But when we totally turn away from what the world is doing and we do our thing, then the world, and I use that in kind of a, you know, abstract sense, but other people and the universe is going to be interested in us because we're not trying to like get the approval or the clients. We're doing our work, doing our work in the best way that we can and putting huge value into what we're doing. And Ultimately, we know that's going to come back to us, but we're not trying to cater to the market, so to speak, or we're not trying to be someone we aren't. It just never, it never works, and you obviously know that at, at this point. But, you know, that variety, not everyone's going to resonate with, with that person that's already doing it at a high level. 
we live in a world of variety. You don't want to listen to the same speaker talking about the same things over and over again. You want to have a variety. Go listen to someone else. Say, you know, you're reading certain books. You don't want to read the same book by the same author and over and over again. It just isn't, that's not what life is about. So my point is that all of us have an opportunity to add another another level of variety for someone else to choose. And then our audience will flow to us as soon as we're being our authentic selves and, you know, doing the thing that we are called to do in our own way, our audience is going to flow to us. And then there's that constant improvement. But that's one of the second things I want to share is that just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean they're going to attract all the clients, just might not be for them. The other big one here is that it's never about what we're doing. Ultimately, there's an underlying principle in play and an underlying idea in play. And that is obviously our own self-growth and self-realization and, and becoming our the best version of ourselves. And that only comes by, you know, showing up every day, pushing through that fear, doubt, anxiety, worry, and pushing through that notion of, oh, there's someone else doing it better than me, right? Well, in a very real sense, that doesn't matter because it's it's an internal game we're really playing, right? Even if there were a million people doing something better than us, because of the nature of the of the human experience, it's an, it's an inside job, but it's an inside game, isn't it? So when we play our inside game, we always win because we get to take what we win from that game. And the win is overcoming the battle with self, right? This comes back to that notion of man versus mind. It's an internal game. It's an internal battle. And the, really the only opponent in this game of life is, is ourselves and our getting over our negative self-talk and our negative self-concept, those kind of things. So it's all an inside job if you look at it in that sense. The last idea that I want to share with you that you can hopefully put in your bag of tools to go out in the world and do your, your work that you're called to do is this. And it kind of ties into something that I said prior, which is um, teaching what we want to know and being the change we want to see in the world. But this, I think, is really important as well. And I've, I've experienced this in my own life. And I think that it really kind of creates um, a foundation for doing our work in the world. And that is listening to what we're inspired to do and listening to how we're inspired to serve. Just because there is a whole industry or a whole business in the world that is already thriving and booming doesn't mean that that's the end all be all of like the world, right? Everything that comes into the world comes through human beings and and then is built in the world. There, it all starts as an idea in our consciousness. And so that's what I think we're all challenged to do is to see the things in the world that we want to improve, how we want to make the world better and ask ourselves, hey, you know, what do I feel is most important in the world? And what am I willing to dedicate my life to doing in the world? What work is going to be the most valuable from my, you know, point of um, point of view and my vantage point in the world that are going to help is going to help people in the best way. And that's, I think one of the core principles. And when we're doing our work, the work that we're inspired to do, not the work that someone else is doing because they had success or, you know, the, the, the new hottest trend, but when we totally turn away and look within and know ourselves, this is huge, right? When we know ourselves, listen to the little voice inside of us and do the work that that little voice has been saying to do throughout our whole lives. We've maybe squashed it down. We maybe uh, didn't give it the credit that it that it deserved because we were conforming, right? Nothing inherently wrong with that. But I think if we really want to get to the high level and if we really want to move into those next levels of like advancing in our career or our field, we've got to listen to that intuition and that inspired voice that is giving us those ideas of, you know, go here, do this, do it in this way kind of becomes our partner, our business partner, right? And that's our our higher selves, our inner being, our wisdom inside of us, the knowledge that's inside of us. So when we're listening to that, it doesn't matter what we're doing as long as we're staying in tune with that and not taking our cues from the outer world, which can be cues that are in the world based on a delusional consciousness, right? Human beings are always awakening from this delusion, this illusion of separateness, like the Buddha talked about. 
separation from God, from source, from our higher selves, from our inner being. But if we connect that and we do what we're inspired to do, we're always going to be doing the right thing in the right way at the right time. So I think that may be, in fact, like the, the foundation of all these tools. If you're doing what you're inspired to do, what you feel is in your heart, then you're always going to be right. And you you will never have any competition. It'll always be for the highest good, and it'll always be in the right way. And so that is the last thing that I want to leave you with, and that is the tuning into your intuition, tuning into knowing yourself, and doing what it what you're inspired to do. And that's, I think, the challenge that we all face. But when we do that, when we get it right, everything just flows into place place and fall and falls into place exactly right. So I hope those tools are beneficial to you on your journey. Those are just some of the ideas that I think about whenever I run into that resistance of, well, why even bother doing this thing? Somebody's already doing it at a high level. And in fact, you buy their products, you buy their services. So those are the things that I think about on my own journey. So we'll wrap up the podcast at that point in time. And as always, until next time, all the best, health, wealth, and success. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.